Hello, lovely internet strangers. Welcome to episode two of the Anti-Feminist Diaries. Today, I'm going to talk about myself, which is something I don't really like doing, but I feel that it's relevant to this channel and why I'm here and my background, my point of view, etc. I'm going to do kind of a story time video, for lack of a better way of putting it. I'd like at some point to do a more comprehensive, here's how I got here kind of video, but it was such a long process that kind of went in fits and starts and had so many different elements to it, so I figure I can kind of just do this video and get at one aspect of what's led me to where I am now. For those of you who seen the intro video to my channel, you'll know that I am in an open relationship, and I'm sure in the future I can go more into how my open relationship works. For now, let me just say that I have a life partner that I've been with for a few years. Our relationship is more on the polyamorous side of things. The people that we get involved with, they tend to become friends. They're not just random, discardable sex partners. In 2016, I met a guy on OKQ. He was also in an open relationship. I went out, we hit it off, and we were dating, seeing each other about once a week for a few months. Then the election happened. Now let me back up a little bit. I was still a feminist. I was still relatively on the left. I had started to become educated about economics and I was learning more about libertarianism because my boyfriend's libertarian and I was following the election and starting to see everyone getting kind of freaked out by Trump to an extraordinary degree. Now I was no fan of Trump. You know, I've never been someone who's super, super into politics. I knew enough to know that I was shifting in some way, but I didn't feel particularly informed enough to really engage with someone besides my boyfriend, so I just didn't talk about it. That's not what has ever connected me to people in a friendship, and I've had entire friendships where we basically never talk about politics, except maybe me and my roommate in college both talked about how we were going to vote for Obama. I hadn't talked about politics at all with this guy, but we were managing to have a very very strong connection, had all kinds of really fascinating conversations without politics ever coming up. I know, right? It's so strange. Like, how does one do that? How does one get through the day without talking about politics? Before, I never had a problem not bringing up politics, but it was 2016 and apparently things were different. There were times when he tried to bring it up and I very skillfully changed the subject, skirted around it. Eventually, election night was upon us. I was abroad. We'd had plans for a few weeks because my boyfriend was also going to be out of town for one day when I was back. He had never seen my apartment. Sidebar, when you are dating someone who's also in a cohabitating open relationship, coordinating hangouts, dates, going to each other's places, etc. is like a whole thing. It was a rare opportunity, so I was really excited about it. I was taking a really early flight back. Right up until I got on the plane, our plans were still in place. Now, I didn't get to see the election results live because I had to go to sleep. I had to get on my flight in my time zone. So then I land. I'm texting him about hanging out later, what time to meet up, etc. He's like, so I got to talk to you about plans for tonight. Basically, he decided to blow off our plans that we'd had for three weeks, which again, let me reiterate, very rare opportunity for him to come see my place. Probably would not happen again. He just really needs to go to this anti-Trump rally because he's really upset about Trump winning. Again, at that time, it's not like I was super pro-Trump. I'm still not super pro-Trump. I'm not super anti-Trump. I'm very Trump neutral, a Trump. I just didn't get the fervor. I didn't understand at all the depth of despair that was permeating the air that I was seeing among my friends. I've never been a person who would go protest. Even when I was a, like a hardcore lefty or feminist, I was never a protest person. As far as I'm concerned, protests that aren't we are protesting X specific policy. A protest where it's just a rally that's to demonstrate that you're against someone or some idea. Okay, I mean, if that's what you want to do, go ahead. But I left the Catholic Church. I don't need to go to mass anymore. I don't need to go stand around with a bunch of other people all 
emoting together about like how bad we feel about stuff. Go forth if that's what's gonna make you feel better. You're not gonna affect any change. And I knew there was gonna be more protests against Trump. And there were over the next couple of weeks, even just like a couple of days after that. But no, he had to cancel our plans to go protest Trump. You know, he kind of invited me to go, but his partner was gonna be there. I had met her, but you know, I wasn't exactly itching after coming back from a long transatlantic trip to go stand around at a protest because I don't like protests and to be in a crowd of people that I don't agree with. He felt bad. He understood why I was pissed off. He'd reschedule and he'd make it work, you know, to make it up to me. You can't reschedule. This is like a one-time thing. I was really, really, really upset by that and I won't go into the rest of how I reacted to it. Then basically I wrote him an email about how I felt about the whole situation. Basically saying like, you know, from my perspective, the way he acted, it seems like he basically prioritized this like nebulous well-being of people he doesn't know, you know, the country over like this real person in his life who he had made a commitment to spending time with because he needed to go like get his feelings out. So he wrote back basically saying he's not normally like this, so there must be something really unique about this situation. He wasn't overreacting to this. The data only reinforces his his feelings. He's not just worried about himself or humans in general. He was worried about me and his partner, you know, because Trump was just gonna start like rounding up women and I don't know. He said, there are a huge number of dangers that are difficult to quantify, like the legitimization of bigotry, sexism, racism, and xenophobia as a set of valid public opinions, or the legitimization of the concept that objective verifiable facts do not exist and people in power aren't expected to adhere to their use to make arguments or decisions. There's also the fact that this is literally the only elected US president who has had no political military or diplomatic experience before taking office. These things are terrifying and many liberals are focused on them because they are genuinely disturbing, but I'm not most concerned about those things because it's difficult to measure those trends and effects in ways that allow me to gauge their danger. I am, however, extremely concerned about quantifiable danger. Humans now wield terrifyingly large amounts of power and we have created a precarious situation. As things are going, we are guaranteed to cause the fastest and most pervasive mass extinction to ever occur on Earth and drastically alter weather patterns in murderous ways. We are already guaranteed to deal with nuclear proliferation among dangerously unstable governments. We are already going to face the consequences of an economic system based on incalculably unprecedented levels of hoarding that will bestow the benefits of biotechnology on an increasingly elite group of humans. These are all dire situations that I blissfully ignored until the single most powerful man in the world promised to exacerbate these dangers when even doing nothing to mitigate them would be catastrophic. Oh man, I totally forgot about this email. Good times. I understand that all this may sound hyperbolic. You don't say! Or like a vague set of beliefs that adhere to a common contemporary ideology espoused by rather irritating subcultures. I also understand that a protest may not seem to be particularly effective. All I can say is that I don't say or do these things lightly. These aren't beliefs. They are verifiable facts. And protests are often an element of productive social movements. I intend to do a lot more than protest. The election of Donald Trump as the president of the United States of America is one of the two most alarming public events to occur in our lifetime, and I am concerned that as of yet, I don't have any idea how you feel about this election or the rhetoric that occurred during this campaign. That is not the case with any person that I know anything about. I cannot believe that someone as intelligent as yourself hasn't formed opinions about any of the issues that I referred to in this email. The issues I'm talking about are important, not just to me and not just to humanity at large. They are important to you and I have very little idea how you feel about them. I'd really like to know. Oh, would you, bitch? Would you really like to know? Don't think you would. Oh, spoiler alert. Yeah, you really didn't want to know. I got this email from him. Then we agreed to meet up and it was really difficult. It was really bad. I felt like I had my back up against a wall the whole time because I knew he was going to try to grill me about all these different topics and it's not like when you're sitting at a bar with someone that I can be like, oh well I read this study, let me just like pull it up on my phone for you, let me get all the data, right? It's not like when you have some sort of formal debate or when you're writing an article and you can be like, here I'm making my arguments, here are my sources. I can say based on what I've read, I believe X. Or I can say, based on my values of whatever, I believe X. You know, he believes in Obamacare, universal health care, etc. I mean, he's a progressive. He's a social democrat. He used the word liberal in that email and just like, that's not what he is. Because I said that in a utopian scenario that we're never going to achieve because we're so entrenched in the way things are now, a totally free market healthcare system would be the best. But the more free market we can make it, the better. He basically said that because I believe that, I don't care about his partner having healthcare. I wanted to 
say, well, if you really cared about her having health insurance, which is different than health care, then you would marry her because, you know, you've been together for over a decade. Then she could be on your health insurance. Guess you don't care that much. But I didn't say that. Then another thing that he brought up was, oh, well, climate change. You know, surely you, you wouldn't deny climate change. And then I was kind of like, well, what do you mean by climate change? His head just about exploded. Briefly, my opinion. I don't know what is going on. I've read some papers from some people that say certain things. Some people say other things. People have different models. People in the past have made predictions that haven't come true. Even if I acknowledge the most doomsday scenario, then there's the other question, which is what do we do about it? What is the most efficient use of our money? What is the best overall course of action for all people on earth, not just people to live in America or Western Europe, but people who live in the developing world as well, because they're on the cusp of their industrial revolutions and they need fossil fuels. And so denying them those fossil fuels will keep people in poverty. You know, that conversation didn't go terribly well. I mean, it kind of resolved at the end where we kind of made up or whatever. Then we had a second conversation and that one went a little bit better. At the end of that, he basically reiterated to me that he really liked me, thought it was really intelligent and sharp and that it was perfectly okay that we disagreed about things and that we would just keep talking and that we could learn from each other. So I thought everything was going to be fine. Silly, naive me. Let me just say that I can't definitively prove that I got dumped for my political beliefs. He didn't straight up say, the fact that you don't just think we should throw our money into solar panels means that I am dumping you. This is the reason. No, it didn't quite go down like that. I had brought up maybe what did he think about the idea of meeting a couple of my friends and he was totally cool with it, like totally jazzed about it. I wasn't sure I was actually going to do it, but I was just floating the idea and then kind of decided that it wasn't a great idea or that wasn't where things were going to go. But I think that he must have started thinking about what it would be like to get more serious in our relationship. I have to think that where we were, it was fine. But if he really thought about moving forward, my political beliefs were a problem because he broke up with me in a very big email where I wasn't even sure he was breaking up with me. Now, this was someone that I, you know, had a legitimate relationship with for like a few months where I was seeing them at least once a week. They met my partner. I met their partner. A very deep intimacy and affection and vulnerability between us. And he sent me a very curt email vaguely breaking up with me and basically being like, if you want to talk in person, we can. And the reasoning that he gave was he didn't see how it would work if we had more integrated lives where we hung out with each other's friends because he realized that the motivations and viewpoints that each of us share with our friends aren't shared between the two of us. I don't think that either group has found a better way than the other. I just think that they're different in ways that make it difficult for us to relate. And I'm sitting here going, if you think that my viewpoints are shared with my friends, then child, you are very mistaken. That was really shitty. That was really, really, really hard. I cared deeply about this person. And then also because I was being rejected essentially for being honest about what I thought, I only talked about those topics because I was asked to by him. I had deliberately not brought up the subject. And then he basically was like, I need you to tell me what you think. Oh, now you're garbage. I started to have doubts about myself. Could I date anymore? Was every guy going to be like this? Was I going to be able to stay silent because everyone was just going to want to talk about the election and Trump and like want to know my opinions? If I did, were they then going to reject me? Were my beliefs really that beyond the pale that someone didn't want to be with me? Even after getting to know me for several months, deeply connecting with me and saying all these things about how intelligent I was and and thoughtful. Clearly my political beliefs don't impact my character or you would have figured it out a long time ago that I was a shitty person. And it was really difficult because I couldn't really talk to my friends honestly about what had happened. I couldn't explain to them why he had out of nowhere very, very, very abruptly and curtly dumped me. I had to kind of talk around it. I mean, I told them like he blew me off for an anti-Trump rally, but they were basically like, oh, that's fine. I mean, it sucks you didn't get to hang out, but that's fine 
because, you know, fuck Trump. That's a reasonable thing to do. And so I felt like completely invalidated in my emotions because like I was like devastated by that and like super pissed and upset and rejected and just didn't relate to it at all and was sitting here going like, I don't know if things are going to move forward with this person. I just think that acting in that way is completely goes against all of my values. Like I would never do that to someone. And they're just like, no, it's fine. And I couldn't push further without being like, well, I don't think Trump being elected was the literal worst thing that's ever happened. He might turn out to like, you know, actually do okay in office. Who the hell knows? Couldn't say any of that. Like none of them knew I was becoming a classical liberal, having doubts about feminism. I was still a feminist at that time, but I was definitely having doubts. I felt really disconnected from my friends. You know, the only person I could talk to about it was my boyfriend. Although we try to be really open with each other about our dating lives, there's a limit on how much you want to hear about the other person's being upset because of someone else. You know, it's not easy to listen to. Maybe there's like a jealousy, but just also you don't want your partner to be upset, right? And that's like what your friends are supposed to be for. But then I'm sitting here realizing like, you know, I'm also hiding parts of myself from my friends. They don't really know me. And especially after just getting rejected by this guy, I don't know, maybe my friends will reject me. Everything is in question now because this was someone that I had a very intimate connection with and thought for someone who only knew me for a few months, like knew me fairly well or or knew who I was and liked me and had told me that they liked me. And then just this one thing, these stupid little beliefs, opinions about things, you know, not my actions. I wasn't being judged on the content of my character. I was being judged on what I considered to be nothing important. You know, something good came out of it because I made this alternate OkCupid profile and I met someone through there that's become one of my best friends who I can talk to about anything. That never would have happened if I hadn't gone through what I went through with this guy. But it doesn't mean it didn't suck. He was the first person to reject me for my political beliefs. It was a really eye-opening experience for me because I realized that there are all these people that talk a really big game, you know, they're feminist, they're progressive, like they care about helping people, they care about humanity, they care about the world, etc. But they don't give a shit about people in their real lives. This guy subsequently, because the way we left things when I did go talk to him, he just needed time. And then a few months later, when I reached out to him to talk and see what was up, he basically just acted like, I'm not, you know, really even sure why you're talking to me. Oh yeah, you know, like we can hang out, but uh, you know, I'm kind of busy. And he just like dicked me around. Glad that the world will be safe because you're really focused on climate change. So all those people in the future, long after you're dead, will really just be like, thank you. Thank you for your concern. Really glad that you focus all your energies there and not on any anyone that you actually interacted with in your real life. I hope that this sheds some light on where I'm coming from. Thank you for listening. If you like this video, give it a like. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. I hope to have another video up very soon.